Adventures of Weber's Bread present your all-star Western Theater. Oh, bring in a song under a Western. From Hollywood comes your all-star Western Theater. Starring America's great Western singers, Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. We welcome a return visit today from the great cowboy champion, Marty Montana. My name is Cotton C. Clark, and here are the Riders of the Purple Sage. There's an old prairie schooner wending its way over the Santa Fe Trail. With its captain and crew pushing on, going through over the Santa Fe Trail. Excitement and fanfare and the promise of prize money has tempted many a cowboy to desert the range and follow the rodeo trail. There's plenty of fun and plenty of money in rodeoing, but it takes skill and experience to get to the top of the heap, just as it takes skill and experience to bake really fine bread, like Weber's bread. Well mixed and well baked, Weber's bread has a firm, even texture, a golden brown crust, and a distinctive flavor that make it a substantial, enjoyable part of every meal. Family meal or dinner party, no matter what the occasion, you'll find that everyone enjoys the extra freshness and flavor of Weber's bread. The good bread in the blue gingham wrapper. Buy a loaf of Weber's bread next time you shop. You'll like it. Back now to the Riders of the Purple Sage and their Western rendition of another of your favorite old heart ballads. Relax and reminisce as they sing for you, Yearning. Thank you. 
it's adventure time out west with the riders of the Purple Sage, so let's see what troubles and experiences are in store for our three men of the West today as the curtain rises on your all-star Western theater. <laughs> We find our three riders of the Purple Sage, Foy, Al, and Jimmy, rodeo bound down Carsonville Way, just across the border from Old Mexico. With two thousand dollars and five money to lure them on, they ride saddle weary toward the rodeo town. After all, it's a lot easier and more fun to line your pockets with prize money than to spend thirty days line riding, fixing fences, and punching cows. Of course, there's always the possibility that a cowboy won't place in the money. But don't try to tell him that he won't until he fails to do so. Well, boys, there's the lights of Carsonville. Yeah, and it ain't none too soon to suit me. Me neither. I'm tired, hungry, and curious. I don't know which I'd rather do. Go to bed, eat, or see the town. I have an idea you'll see the town. Well, naturally. The first thing we better do is enter our names for the rodeo event. I'd sure hate to miss out after riding this far. Yeah. Then it's going to be a big stake for me, about six inches high and a foot square. <laughs> oh, then let's move up. It's getting late. You get up. I do for you? Reckon we could do with a place to sleep. You boys are in luck. I have one room left. But there's three of us. Are there enough beds for us? There's only one bed in the room, but double bed. Well, Dean, I reckon you'll have to sleep on the floor. Well, why not pick on Dean? Uh, you've got the softest mattress. <laughs> well, now, how about taking the room and quit arguing about who'll sleep on the floor before somebody else steps right up and rents it right out from under us, huh? I can tell you're the smart one of the three. Thank you. Yes, this town's running over with rodeo people. Everybody in the dogs always comes to Cornsville for the rodeo. Oh, by the way, uh, where do we make entry for the event? Mm, right across the street at Buck Portland's Saloon. We just got until about midnight. Oh. How much money for the room? Let's see. It'd be a dollar apiece for the two who sleep in the bed. Four bits for the man who sleeps on the floor. All right, here's the money for two nights. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. I'll send up the towel and the wash pan and water. Much obliged. Come on, boys, let's go over and check in for the rodeo. Yeah, I'll do it. There's the entry desk over there. Yeah, let's get in line. Say, you guys sign up for me. I'm going to move around a little bit. Okay, what do you want to go in for? Well, put me down for the wild cow milking event. I've always wanted to try that ever since I was a little squirt. <laughs> oh, okay, come on, Dean. Okay. All right, friend. Here's your number. That'll be a $25 entry fee. Here you are. Much obliged. Next. Monty Montana, trick riding and roping. <laughs> well, well, Monty Montana. <laughs> I was beginning to wonder if you'd show up. Yeah, I was a little late getting in, Bob, but I brought my wife and Monty Jr. along. Well, with you folks on hand, I know this year's rodeo will be a big success, Monty. Well, thank you, sir. I'll see you in the rodeo tomorrow. Fine. Get a good night's rest. Yes, sir. Sure will. Next. Say, wasn't that Monty Montana? That was him. The best doggone rodeo showman in America for my money. Him and his wife and young'un are going to do some exhibition riding and roping. They're a great rodeo troupe, all right. Yeah, the best in the West. Now, uh, what event do you want, friend? Put me down for calf roping. The name is Foy Willing. Foy Willing. My friend here, Jimmy Dean, will go in for bronc riding. Jimmy Dean. Then give me another number for Al Sloy. Al Sloy. Uh, wild cow milker. All right, boys. <laughs> here you are. That'll be $65. Here you are. Much obliged. And good luck to you. Thanks. Come on, Dean. Let's lift the town over. Okay. Uh, where'd Al go? Oh, there he is over there talking to the barkeep. Yeah, I wonder what kind of a line he's passing out tonight. Boy, there ain't a bit of telling in the world. Believe it or not, nine ball, I milked that wild cow across the finish line to establish a new world's record. <laughs> Senor, you must be a very fast wild cow milker. Uh, pretty fast, all right. Tomorrow I'm going to make an attempt to break my own record. 
That is, providing I get a good roper. Maybe like Senor Monty Montana? Yeah, Monty's pretty good. Of course, he ain't the roper that I am. Uh, I'm even thinking about doing my own roping and milking, too. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, say, do you know Monty Montana? I never met him, Senor Sloy. Well, he's an old pal of mine. He's uh, a little jealous of me, though. Mm. How is that, Senor? Well, it might sound like bragging. I'd, uh... I like to hear you brag. Well, Tell me. Huh. Well, just between you and me, uh... I thought Monty had a handle of rope. No! Sure did. <laughs> Never forget the time he walks up to me and he says, I... Say, friend, you got an extra entry blank there? Well, sure, stranger. Here you are. Much obliged. See you boys at the show tomorrow. Yeah. He walks up to me and he says, Hey, uh, Senor, hmm? you know who the man was what just asked you for the entry blank? No, probably some cowboy that will beat out of his money there. To <laughs> that him. was Senor Monte Montana? Nice looking fella. So he walks up to me and he says... Who? Uh, well, boys, figuring on hitting the hay. Yeah, I reckon we might as well. Well, that is, if there ain't nothing else in the way of excitement going on. Well, some of the cowboys in room 207 playing, uh, uh, playing dominoes. Galloping dominoes? That's my game. <laughs> Boy, I'm glad we got our entry money paid before you found that out. Boy, you better come on and go to the room with us. Oh, I ain't going to waste my time sleeping. I'll see you later, boys. Yeah, I remember we told you. Man, oh man, I guess he'll never learn. Well, the first two men in the room get to sleep in the bed. And... Hey, that's right. How about it, friend? Can you put us up for tonight? And how many there are there in your party, friend? We ain't throwing no parties. We just want a room to sleep. No, you boys are in luck. I have one room left, but it has a double bed. Well, that old reprobate. What was that, friend? I said it's getting kind of late. Yes, it is. Uh, come on, Dean, let's go. What's that? What's that? Dean, Dean, answer the door. Hey, hey, Dean, wake up. Oh, what you want? Answer the door. Hello, door. Oh, I'll get it. Uh, you sleep? Oh, no, I'm up picking horseshoes. Well, come on in here and go to bed. Well, I'm not quite ready. Uh, boy, uh, could you let me have about ten bucks? Ten bucks? But tonight I wouldn't even let you have ten cents. But I was just getting... Yeah, I know, I know. There's the floor. You made your bed, now lie in it. Oh, gosh. Boy, if I'd have had ten more bucks, I'd have cleaned them. Uh-huh. Good night, Floy. It's going to be up to you and Dean to win the money. That calf I drew gave me more trouble than a mean mother-in-law. Yeah, I saw that. That baby was really a wild one, man. Oh, man. Dean, you're up next in the bronc riding event. Better get ready. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, well, you can over the seat and help me mount that back there. And don't forget, Floyd, the wild cow milking is up next. Well, I'm ready in a raring. Let's go, huh? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're about ready for the next ride in the Bareback Bronx event, so hang on to your feet. Jimmy Dean is going to come out of shoot number five in just a few moments from that wild man killer, El Hovo. And you'll have to make a mighty good ride to compete with the men we've seen perform here in Carsonville today. While we're waiting for Dean to take a seat on El Hovo, let us remind you of the event that followed, the wild cow milking contest. Now, there's the event that is filled with laughs and thrills. Right now, we're witnessing the spectacular Marty Montana with his pretty wife, Louise, and Marty Jr., as they thrill the crowds with their sensational riding and trick roping. Now, there's the finale of their famous rodeo act. As Marty ropes eight horses running abreast, his hat goes up in the air, and Montana gets a great big hand from the spectators. Now we're looking down into the chute, and we see Jimmy Dean as aboard El Hobo. He gives the signal, the chute opens, and out comes Jimmy Dean. Now here comes the horse.
And just a few moments. <laughs> yeah, it looks as if Dean has had some hard luck. Just a few moments, we'll be back to the wild cow milking event. Everybody, please stand by. Oh, that sad, blamed horse didn't have sense enough to come out of his chute. <laughs> oh, what happened, Jimmy? Well, when I geared myself to come out of the chute, that horse humped when he should have jumped, and I went right over his head. Now, if Al don't come up with the wild cow milking money, then we're going to be at 65 bucks. Now, don't worry about me. If that cow I draw gives milk, I'll get it. Yeah, you'd, you'd better. Work. If you don't, it means we're going to have to go to work. No, anything but that. Who do you want to rope the cow for you, me or Dean? Well, maybe Dean had better do it. Well, I don't mind roping, but wrestling with that cow while you're trying to milk her is too much for me. Well, you just better decide which one of us is the best for the job, because if we don't win this event, we're goners now. What's the matter, boys? You got trouble? You just ain't a kidding. Say, you're Marty Montana. That's right. My name's Willings. This is Al Slow and Jimmy Dean. Hello, Marty. Hello, Willie. Hiya, man. Uh, what's your trouble? Well, to be honest about it, Marty, Dean and me missed the money in our event. Now, if Floyd don't come in with the bacon on the wild cow milking, we're going to be broke right on a pancake. Well, what's your problem? Trying to figure out which one of us should do the roping. Yeah, and neither one of us is very good. Well, you got a right yeah. to choose your own man, and I'm just a hankering to rope something. Are you a kidding? No, I mean it. Well, that's good enough for me. Let's get going. Come on. Come on, man. in the wild cow milking event. Al Sloy, number 13. The best time to now has been 41 seconds. The time made by Chuck Carter, the flying a -ray. Now remember what the contestant has to do. The cow is released from the chute. The roofer ropes and mugs or holds the cow while the milker attempts to cover the bottom of an ordinary pop bottle with milk and race a foot to the finish line. And we've just learned that Sloy has Marty Montana as his roper, which means about 10 or 15 seconds to his credit to go with there goes the cow. The flag is down and Montana is after her like a flag. He swings wide his rope. There's the throw. coming out of the saddle while his horse takes up the slack on the rope. Now he has the cow with the horns and here comes Flo in a hard run with the top bottle. The cow is trying to break away but Marty Montana holds on to him. Her. There it goes. Flo breaks away in a hard run for the finish line. We can see the white milk in the bottle as he runs, running like a fresh shot at Jack Rabbit. There he goes across the finish line and it looks like the best time yet. And it is. Yes, sir, the judges clock out for for 39 seconds. Well, the prize money for that event wasn't too much, but it sure keeps us out of the hole. Well, it kept us from going to work. Yeah, camp roping would have paid four hundred dollars if you hadn't have messed it up. Yeah. And that three hundred and fifty dollar bronc riding you did ain't to be bragged about. <laughs> well, I I got a bad break. Mm -hmm. And what do you think I got with that stubborn calf I tried to rope? Well, all I know is that I got a hundred bucks for milking that cow. I got that. Yeah, but what about our sixty five dollar entry fee? Oh, what you beefing about? That's thirty five dollar profit. It's better than nothing, all right. What you? Have? That brings our total budget up to one hundred and nineteen dollars. After discounting your domino game last night, Slow. Well, now, I just got a bad break uh -huh. there, boy. I yeah, mean... but I wonder how that old boy feels that you beat it out, out of that $100 by two seconds. Yeah, I saw him later, and he looked like he'd lost his last friend. Speak <laughs> <laughs> of the devil, and he appears. Oh, yeah, here he comes now. Well, hi, Carter. How are you? All right, I reckon. Sorry I beat you out in the milking event there. Eh? Well, me too. Sure needed that money. That invents the clothes that don't wreck and hit me so hard. About two seconds apart, weren't you? Yeah. You can't begin to know what that two seconds difference meant to me. What do you mean, Carter? Well, there's going to be a new addition to my family, and I stake my last nickel for entry money in that event. That's too bad. Yeah, I can understand how you feel when a new baby comes along. It costs money, all right. You ain't just kidding. And that's something I ain't got none of. Well, gosh, Carter, that makes me feel mighty bad. Oh, can't hold again you, Sloy. Well, reckon I'll walk over and quit that card game over there. A few boys later. Yeah. Okay. You know, that was sure a tough break, all right. Yeah, I feel sorry for him. Wish you hadn't told us about it. Me too. Uh, uh, say, how, how much money did you say we had? We got uh, $119 all told. Well, that's a lot of money, all right. Yeah, we'll probably run through it in a couple of days. You know, it'd be better if we was broke. Maybe we'd get to doing a little work instead of picking on these guitars and loafing and singing. Yeah, I feel the same way. Well, uh, what do you boys think about it, huh? It's all right as me. Yeah, me too. I've always been in favor of settling down for a spell and working for a living. 
Who's going to do it? Not me. It's up to you, Floyd. After all, you won the money from him. Well, we'll all three do it. I'll do the talking. What are you going to tell him? I don't know. Something. Call him over here. Okay. Carter! Yeah? Come over here a minute. Yeah, what's up, boys? We want to talk to you. Uh, sure. What's on your mind? Uh, tell him, Floyd. Well, uh, it's like this, Carter. Since you told us that the stork was going to make a call out your place, well, I... I thought I'd just go ahead and tell you what a dirty trick I did you and try to make amends to you. I don't get what you mean. Well, it's like this. Uh, I didn't really win that cow milking money. That is fair. It looked to I... me like you did. Well, I know it, but uh, that wasn't milk I had in that bottle. While I was running down toward that cow to milk her, I squirted some chalk water out of a tube I had in my shirt pocket. and All I did was touch the cow and then head for the finish line. If I'd really milked her, uh, why, gosh, you'd have beat me by about ten seconds. What's the idea of telling me about it? Well, here's a hundred bucks. It's rightfully yours. Gosh, I don't know what to say. Mighty wide of you men to do this. Ah, uh, think nothing of it. Just don't tell nobody what I told you, huh? No, I won't, Floyd. And believe me, the babe and me won't forget you. It's all right, Carter. Well, we'll see you later. Come on, boys. We've got to get moving on. So long, boys. And again, thanks for everything. Okay, oh, Carter. Well, Hope to see you again. Say oh, yours. I'm not good, could help overhearing what took place. Is that right? See, and those three boys had a heart of gold. And that was indeed a noble thing for them to do. Sure was kind of them. They sure are swell guys. And, and your wife is going to have a baby? What is going to be, a boy or a girl? Oh, <laughs> I ain't got no wife. <laughs> What do you mean you've got no wife? No, it's my horse. We're going to have a new baby colt. Your horse is going to have a baby colt. Mother of me, I thought the was. Well, boys, we may be chumps, but I feel like we did a mighty good turn giving that fellow his hundred dollars. Yeah, me too. You know, it makes me feel kind of like good inside. Yeah, well, I had to make myself out of crook to do it, though. Oh, that's all right. You know, I hope it's a girl. Well, I'd kind of like for it to be a boy. Maybe he'll get sentimental and name it Al Chloe Carter after me, you know. What a name. Well, let's ride up. we got to find work. Drifting along, singing a song. the writers of the Purple Sage in today's story were Harry Lang as Mambo, Dick Ryan as Waco, Hank Caldwell and Johnny Paul, Monty Montana as himself. Here again are the writers of the Purple Sage. Well, herdin' cowboy, hop on your pony, singin' Elie, Elie-o, start ridin' now, boy, we'll make San Antonio singin' Elie, Elie-o, long weary day, and a dusty road to travel. But we'll make the boss pay for all this battle driving cattle. Light harvest, carefree trail, herding cowboys. Elie, Elie-o, keep moving, doggie. Time is a wasting thing. Elie, Elie-o, I'm not impatient, but why don't you hate and sing it? Elie, Elie-o, you ought to know that a certain someone's waiting. You ought to know that we've got this maiden confiscating arms will enfold this trail herding cowboy thing. Elie, Elie-o, Elie, Elie-o. You know, every so often, the writers of the Purple Sage step out of the West into the field of popular music to bring you a current favorite in Western style. We think you'll like their rendition of Zippa Dee Doo Da, Men Sing. Zippa Dee Doo Da, Zippa Dee A. My, oh, my, what a wonderful day. Plenty of sunshine heading my way. Zippa Dee Doo Da, Zippa Dee A. Mr. Bluebird on my shoulder. It's the truth, it's actual. Everything is satisfaction, zippity-doo-da, zippity-a. Wonderful feeling, wonderful day, Mr. Bluebird on my shoulder. It's the truth, it's factual. Everything is satisfaction, zippity-doo-da, zippity-a. Wonderful feeling, wonderful day.
Hardened as they are from working under all sorts of conditions in all kinds of weather, cowboys are traditionally soft-hearted when it comes to helping out a friend. Their friendship is unquestioning. And that's the kind of friends that Weber's Bread has today. Unquestioning. Because those who use Weber's Bread know that Weber's is always good bread. Its quality is consistent. It never lets you down. As toast for breakfast, sandwiches for lunch, or in-between snacks, and when served with more elaborate meals, Weber's bread blends well with other foods and becomes an important, enjoyable part of the menu. Buy a loaf of Weber's bread next time you go shopping and see if your family doesn't agree that Weber's adds extra enjoyment to every meal. You will find Weber's bread on your grocer shelves in the familiar blue gingham wrapper. Buy a loaf tomorrow. You'll like it. We know you folks were pleasantly surprised to hear again from that great all-around cowboy champion, your good friend and ours, Marty Montana. We're willing to throw a rope on him and bring him back up here to visit with the folks. You know, he's just a shade bashful, Cotton. I can't help that. That This radio makes me sort of that way, boys. Well, what does the rodeo do for you, Marty? Well, that's a different story. I'd rather look a mad bull in the eye than to talk in one of these blame things. <laughs> you can have your mad bull. I'll take the microphone. Well, then how about you boys singing one of my favorite songs into it? We have it all ready for you, Monty. It's that famous classic of the West, Tumbling Tumbleweed. Hollywood, you have heard your all-star Western theater, a V.M. Bear production starring America's great Western singers, Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage, now being featured in Republic's all-color Western out California way. My name is Cotton C. Clark, asking you to keep company with us again next week at this same time. program came to you from Columbia Square. K.N. Exlos Angeles, the voice of Hollywood.